what if they threw okay she throws she throws the book out the window but it hits the the window and falls straight down she throws a knife falls straight down the the victim whatever her name is people they never say her name olive green olive goes across the street or was already on that side of the street picks up the book maybe goes back across the street somebody else comes up takes the knife goes over there stabs her in the back those guys don't actually they didn't actually see anything that happened up before that happened and then they just saw oh stab and run Meanwhile, the, uh, the, whatever his name is, Sa, Sosami, Sosami, Soseki was just a complete other street over and had nothing to do with this. <laughs> it turns out somebody was moving a large curved pipe on the sidewalk below the window. <laughs> <laughs> So, so perfect. The what? The eyes of the two. No, she's got stars for eyes. She... Mm, not sure. Not sure. I think they're just regular eyes. Could be, though. Someone moved the building after the murder. That's it. Lots of earthquakes in London. Buildings are, are routinely sliding all over the place. Alright, let's skip all the technical explanation of how windows work. And just go straight to the fifth statement. Because I think... That's the thing, right? He's like, oh yes, I never close my eyes. Even for a second. Do, 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 do. Oh, Olive and the Constable? That's, that's more reasonable. Nothing else about them really looks similar. Well, they also both have blush, kind of. But, mmm... We shall see. <laughs> We shall see. Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. Had my eyes wide open the entire time. Never looked away for a second. No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. Swear to that on the yard's honest, sir. Really? That seems a little strange. Bet your pardon, sir. Strange, sir. Seems altogether regular to me. This burnt copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the garret of household, so the question remains, how did it find its way into the hand of the victim? Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were at the scene of the crime the entire time? I guess, yeah. Actually, a, a lot of people have blue eyes in this, uh, in this case so far, don't they? Blue, 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 blue. Everyone's got blue eyes. I guess they, they've been... <laughs> this whole time, all of the other games took place in Japanifornia, and they couldn't give everybody blue eyes without it looking weird. They've been holding back all this time. <laughs> uh -huh. Could it be a different copy, sir? Well, it just happened to be butt as well. Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hand? As we can see from this photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulder. Well, sir, that book was in the lady's hand from the moment we arrive on the scene. Is that so? There's something about this statement that's not sitting right with me. The two mysteries of how that knife ended up in her back and how that book ended up in her hand. There must be some common thread between them. 
I'm so sorry, Mr. Naruhodo. I had no right to speak out. What do you mean? I requested the cross-examination of Mrs. Garadab without consulting you. Even if the judge did deny me. Oh, I see. Well, I agree with you. We do need testimony from Mrs. Garadab. If we're ever going to get to the truth of this matter. Do you really think so? Well, think about it. No matter how far it is across the road, or how that window opens, Mr. Garadab's book found its way to the scene of the crime somehow, didn't it? <laughs> there was a threat? <laughs> Of course, the book hit the thing and then fell, and the knife hit this. One of them wrapped around the... I forgot what it's called. A stay? Wrapped around the stay. Like that. And it created, like, a slingshot effect. You're right. And then there was Mr. Mrs. Garadab's reaction to me showing her the knife. The woman's hiding something. I'm sure of it. Is she still on the floor, by the way? Did anybody pick her up? She fainted. But I never saw her get back up. Is she alive? Is she holding a book? You're right again. We need to use this cross-examination to uncover more clues. We'll get to the bottom of this one one way or another, I swear. <laughs> there was a large wave that tilted the whole town, so everyone's door is locked. <laughs> I lo I'm definitely finding this game to be a lot more fun than the other two Phoenix Wright games that we've... Actually, three, right? Dual Destiny, Spirit of Justice, and the Miles Edgeworth one. This is, this is way more fun than any of those. Nobody cares about windows. No, go back to this. Hold it! If anything had been thrown out the window, we would have seen it. But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already, and it was dark. Albert Rowley and I were strolling along, gazing at the night sky and looking for our lucky star. Sorry? The star that will guide us to eternal happiness. Wait, a cult or something? Can it guide you to answer the question? If a flaming book had cut across the sky in front of us, it would have lit up like a shooting star. And if I'd seen a shooting star, I would have made a wish upon it. Let Rolly be an inspector, I would have said. Three times at least. Of course, what with the smog and everything, we couldn't actually see any stars. In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? Yes, sir. That's correct, sir. Shows the night sky and under the starless, sir. Hmm. Certainly seems like they're telling the truth about not being able to see anything. If only I could use that to discredit them as witnesses. And then we saw the poor woman fall to the ground, so we ran straight over to help her. Oh, the latent crossover? I forgot about that one. Uh, the Phoenix right sections of that weren't as enjoyable as this. The puzzles were alright. Some of the puzzles. Press. Yes, you said you went to a nearby police box to fetch another officer. Is that right? That's right. Yes. <clears throat> if it had been on Rolly's beat, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. You can't be expected to know a location of every police box on every beat. So Rolly told me the way. Only, I sort of got a little lost on the way. Patricia, my darling, it's what I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. Oh, please. So I suppose I was gone for about 15 minutes. But like I said, my Rolly was at the scene the, the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed off duty at the time, but of course the true Bobby is never really off duty, sir. Hmm. So she left and was gone for 15 minutes, and he was most likely asleep the entire time. By which you mean they don't open fully, is that correct? Yes, sir. 
they just there to air a bit of air in through the house, you see, so they're restricted as to how much they open. And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from the inside the room will simply strike the pane and fall to the street below, triggering the sidewalk littering tax. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Here is the location where the objects would have fallen. Hmm, yes. Directly opposite the scene of the crime, on the other side of the rather wide road. Despite what Faded has said. <laughs> would it have been so hard for somebody to mention this top-hinged casement thing before? Well, I have another question for you, Constable. What would that be, shot? How do you even know? Why would you have any idea what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Garadib's house is furnished with? Here it comes. Oh, well, sir, it's very simple. You see, I out with the investigation yesterday. Oh. No, I must hear more about the windows. Did he tax them? You helped in what way? Various members of the public were questioned in order to gather information about the case. That's right, so that true phase were all overworked. So even though I wasn't under the jurisdiction of my own beat, I obviously wanted to help. I see. Well, thank you. Oh, is it my turn now? No. No turns. Only pressing. Hold it. <laughs> Their names are Pat and Roll. <laughs> I, I didn't get the rolly beat thing. I was like, I don't get it. What's that? Pet petrol. Petrol beat. <laughs> Come on. Excuse me. Excuse? You have something to add, Mrs. Beat? Hmm, sorry? You look... Well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering, that's all. We really were so lucky. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, I found a, my, I found a lucky knife tip on the ground. Well, of course I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. <clears throat> but we were just so lucky it didn't happen on Rolly's beat. It was so close, you see. Oh, I hadn't realized. Oh, yes, that street, Briar Road, that's the boundary between Rolly's beat and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? Constable Beat! Hmm? Oh, yeah, yes, that's right. That's the reason I was helping out with interviewing the occupants of the Garadab household yesterday. The house is on my beat, you see, So, Hmm. I really was cutting it close there. Constable, I wonder if you could clarify something. Did he move the body from one side of the street to the other so that he wouldn't have to deal with it? <laughs> Oh, is that going to be it? If the Garadab household is on your beat, does that mean that the pavement next to it is as well? Outside Mr. Garadab's house? Yes, ma'am. The pavement on that side of the road is part of my beat. <laughs> I see. I was unaware of that. Just think, if the woman had been attacked just on the other side of Friar Road, we would never have been able to go for that meal to celebrate. <laughs> But that's the life of Bobby, after all. Extraordinary people, our Bobby is working tirelessly, working for the benefit of all Londoners. Do you know what I think? I think it was the good Lord's way of re rewarding my Roly for all his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? Uh, must be it, Pat, my love. That must be it. 
I think perhaps we should make sure we have that information officially on record. Leave it to me, Mr. Naruhodo. I'll take care of it immediately. It's not your job. It's not your job. <laughs> So I guess I can press on this to like just pressing on something you can still get vital information even if the statement has nothing to do with what's going on. How can you say for certain? Very good question sir. And the answer is this. It has the noble founding principles of the force written on it as a reminder of all policemen of all sworn duty. He told us that before didn't he? Did he? I can't say I remember. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the peace of the common man, that's what the job's all about. That is why I can stand here today beside my long suffering wife and tell you Bobby's good for his word. Or rubble my tired eyes, admittedly, sir. Oh, Roly, you're so manly. Oh, of course I am, my darling Patricia. Oh, Pat. Oh, Roly. No, none of this is what I meant. <laughs> I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garrodeb? Oh, I see, sir. You should have said so earlier, sir. Yes. Well, do you think you could answer the question? That was a waste of time. Absolutely, sir. Answer to the fullest of my ability, sir. There's a surprising reason. Is there? Why, well, Mr. and Mrs. Garrodeb's domestic dispute can't be related to this case. Or is it just the window? But before I get into that, sir, just one thing. Yes. I'd very much like you and your countrymen to understand the great British institution of Scotland Yard. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London Bobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. Can I have a copy of your book? Uh, I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only arrived here. So to that end, sir, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for your perusal. But I must warn you, you won't be able to get it, get through it without shedding a few tears. Thank you. I'll try. Curious. Oh. No, I'm busy. I'm busy looking at a warrant card. And will be for the next several hours. Principles of policing. A policeman will strive to pre preserve the peace within his allotted beat. A patrolling officer is expected to walk 20 miles around his beat every day for the furtherance of community relations. And most importantly... Oh, two more. Any crimes fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the invis initial investigation and help detectives. Um, can I ask you something? Please, Mr. Lawyer, sir. Oh, uh, yes, of course. What is it? You're... you're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell. What? I wasn't really. I mean, what's she doing? Please. Just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word, I am. I, I don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses. I don't want to hear it. My voice will be heard. My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? Yes, Mrs. Beat, I will allow you to su supplement your testimony if you so desire. Sometimes the path of least resistance is the sage one. It's a very loud mutter. I heard that. A Japanese man thinks a policeman's wife's word counts for nothing, does he? Well, watch out, sir. I might let you get away with something like that, but my Roly won't. 
Duly noted, Mrs. B. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. What could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? I know what I saw. My eyes never let me down. My sense of direction is a little off sometimes, though. Is this going to be related to, like, she left, he moved the body, and when she came back, she she didn't recognize that it was on the wrong side of the street. Or she's going to say, like, oh, I went down this street and over and came back and came back and came this way. And, uh, and there was the body. Hold it! Alright, let's hear it. This is beat. Nobody's questioning what you've told us. I saw it. I did. That evening I saw it clearly. That little eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curved back slinking away from the scene. And I know what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying through the sky. All very clear. You... You also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction? <clears throat> oh, yes, well... That's a little embarrassing, really. I'm always ending up at the wrong place when I've made arrangements to re meet Rolly. He gets ever so cross. And he holds his head, and then I throw things at him. Oh, well, we've all made mistakes like that from time to time, I'm sure. Uh, the armband? Uh, that's... It's it's in the uh, the court record. It's Ka Kazuma is his friend who was the one who was originally coming to England to practice law, and this is his armband. Why can't I go back? I can never go back. Okay. Armband I inherited. I inherited because Kazuma died. It identifies the wearer as a defense lawyer throughout the Empire of Japan, and it is not his. <laughs> I got the wrong church on the day of our wedding, I remember. It caused a terrible kerfluffle. Kerfuff? Kerfuffle? I thought there were two L's. I'm not gonna die on that 2L hill, though. I very nearly got married to someone I've never met before. Uh, that would most certainly not do, madame. Anyway, continue with your testimony, please, constable. Yes, sir. Bing, 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 Excuse me! Constable Beat, is there a problem? Uh, 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 no, sir, no problem, sir. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, um, well, in a way, sir, yes, sir. It's just remembering that the same thing happened that evening, is all. You mean Mrs. Beat lost her way on the night of the incident? Well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box in the next beat over from mine. But she was gone a fair bit longer, not what I was expecting. I thought she'd be back inside ten minutes, but my darling was gone a good fifteen. Oh, Rolly, you're such a tease. But the reason I was so long was because of the bouquet, silly. The bouquet? Sorry, what bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Rolly's so romantic, he saved up for it with farthings and hepanies he found in the gutter while doing his rounds. Yes, how romantic. I'd forgotten all about it till just now. Had you, my darling? Oh, 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 yes. Uh, but that was just between us. No talking about it to anyone else, darling. You have to promise. Really? Oh. What was that all about? Constable Beat looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid I can't offer any useful insight, Mr. Naruhodo, but I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Mrs. Beat about the bouquet. Mrs. Beat, this bouquet you just mentioned, I'd like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. Hold it! G 
go on. You mean you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. Oh, I was so upset. When we ran over and saw it was a woman with a knife in her back, I was so shocked I dropped the bouquet Roly gave me. It was in a dark spot where the street lights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then, you went to the police box to report it to the policeman whose beat it was on. Yes, and I came back to the scene, together with the other constable, you see. That's when I spotted my bouquet again, but the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. Very suspicious. In case you need reminding, Miss B, the victim is not deceased. I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice calling me from the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably. That's right. Silly me, I'd gone over to the wrong side of the street. If only I had a map to tell me where things are, I could look at the map and know what was going to be in the place that I was going to. Although I'm going to blame the bouquet this time. I can't think how it got there. I really can't. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of Briar Road to the opposite. Curious indeed. The judge knows. Isn't it? But the worst of it is, I forgot to pick the bouquet up again when we left the scene. That beautiful rose Roly bought me. And with that change from the gutter he spent so long collecting. By bouquet, do you perhaps mean this sorry single solitary rose? One! One rose! Ah, ah, ah. Oh! Oh, yes, yes, that's it. That's the bouquet Roly brought, bought me for our anniversary, with bits of change he found in the gutter. <laughs> Maybe just call it a rose. Tell us, Lord Van Zeex, where did you come by the flower? According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, It was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Garadab household. In front of the Garadab's house? I don't get it. I'm a dum-dum. Although it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting some classic English literature in here. Was believed to be of no relevance to the case since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Can I have it back now, please? Hmm. No, I think for good measure the rose should be added to the court record as evidence. The anniversary bouquet <laughs> has been added into. <laughs> How sad. But it's a symbol of our love, or it's a symbol of his guilt is a real murderer an english rose it's such a beautiful flower ah this is a rose is it i've never seen one before do you not take an interest in flowers mr narahodo i wouldn't say that exactly but i do know three types at least uh sakuras Gosh, three. Plum Blossom, Peach Blossom, Cherry Blossom. Perhaps you should consider branching out. Learning that some aren't fruit tree based, for example. Wait, this, this newspaper, it's about a, an escaped Russian figure skater. How could we have overlooked this? Oh, that's still just the rose. Very stylish paper the flower's wrapped in, isn't it? Uh, it's just old newspaper, Mr. Narahodo. What's wrong with you? Oh, I suppose it's because I'm not used to seeing English print. It looks so exotic to me. <laughs> I see. Something wrong? Oh, no, no. I was just thinking that if you wrapped a stone-baked sweet potato in English newspaper, it might look like some sort of fancy cake. Oh, Susaro-san, you do love your cakes. You do love your roasted sweet potatoes. 
<laughs> but you've been speaking in English print this whole time. I want it back after the trial. Do you hear me? I want it back. Good grief. Rest assured, I shall do my very best not to forget Mrs. Beat. So what do they want me to do now? I mean, we, we know what happened. To report. I don't remember this okay, so for him to say nothing, nothing was removed. Okay. Will I pre present the rose here to say, hey, what's your explanation that the rose is no longer at the crime scene? This. The whole idea of an invisible attacker has been troubling me all along. But I believe I'm starting to get a picture of what really happened here now. <sighs> the fourth book that had no business being at the scene of the crime made me sure that Mrs. Garadev was hiding something from us, but it's becoming increasingly clear that someone else has been hiding something from us as well. I think I may already be armed with everything I need to strike a decisive blow here. This time, it's going to expose the whole truth about this mysterious affair. Nothing strange to report, but what about the rose? Objection. Yes, got it right. I wasn't sure. You claim, Constable Beat, there was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes that you were guarding the scene, but that cannot be. What? What do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Mrs. Beat, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to that beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere Objection. nearby. It was the freaking wind, dude. No. <laughs> yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single sorry bloom, one bloom, can be so described. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street back into the gutter where it will fly. Oh my god, he's so savage when it comes to shitty flowers. <laughs> Meager. But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to the fact? No one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. Constable Beat swore to that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the bouquet belonged to me. It has nothing to do with the case. That's that's why Rolly didn't mention it, I'm sure. No, because sadly, it's not only your bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously t'other way round. What are you talking about? Think about it. Besides Mrs. Beat's bouquet, there's Mr. Garadeb's book. Mr. Garadeb's copy of the Lion's Pride, which was thrown, thrown out of the window by his wife, would have struck the pane of the casement window and landed here, on the west side of the street. And yet... It was actually found here on the opposite side of the road, in the victim's hand. Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Mrs. Beat's bouquet should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime on the east side of the street. But in fact, it was actually found here on the opposite side of the road, in front of Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb's house. 
There's no logical explanation for those things, unless somebody deliberately moved them. What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my Roly's done something wrong. Don't you listen to a word that scrawny lawyer says. Wittering on about books and bouquets, why should we care? It's nitpicking is what it is. You are nitpicking and biased. I win. Goodbye. Oh, good. Mrs. Garadeb's come around. You might call it nitpicking, Mrs. Garadeb, but deliberately meddling with the scene of a crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Meddling. Tampering, Mr. Narahoto. But the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit to it for a very subtle but compelling Objection. reason. Tampering. You've barely heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend, who would possibly have had cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there is someone who tampered with the scene of a crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. Counsel, I must demand that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? It was you! Take that! Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Constable Roly Beat, it was you. What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? What nonsense! Why would my Roly do something like that? There's no one straighter than my husband. No Bobby works more tirelessly for the people of London. Mrs. Beat, you said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up. It's all nonsense. It's all lies. What about that Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him. He did it. Objection. If that was true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it. Oh. And forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Mrs. Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Arg, well, well. First, one, you make accusations about the landlord and his wife. Two, you incriminate a policeman as well. But your accusations lack very one very important thing. You claim the crime scene was tampered with, but there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. That's right. He's right. But my husband and I just happened to be there, that's all. So why would we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense. You've offered no motive for this, ale this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Constable Beat had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Naro. Have you... have you managed to solve this mystery? Counsel, you made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. If you are mistaken, or just guessing, for goof, <laughs> I need not point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevocably damaged. With that stark warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Yes, my lord. Constable Beat's motive for tampering with the crime scene was to hide where? Where the... Oh. <laughs> where the victim fell. Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You, you mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Briar Road. We saw it happen, remember? It was right here, as if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly what everybody has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? What? Oh, look, you can see. They are connected. It is all one scarf. 
Mystery solved. I'm beginning to wonder where this tumultuous trial will end, Council. If that's your assertion, the court is dying to know my Nipponese friend. Where are you proposing the crime actually took place? I don't know, like right there, probably. Take that! But, but that's on the opposite side of the road. I don't understand. Uh, it's because your sense of direction is terrible, and you should be ashamed. On the evening in question, Mr. Garadab's book fell directly down from the open window above, and your bouquet, Mrs. Beat, never moved at all. What did move? 720 no scope was the scene of the crime itself. Good gracious! Objection! Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. Th that's right, I saw it with my own eyes. It was five o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was the typical London, London fog on the ground. When you saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim's aid, that was actually on the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true. It can't have been. Constable Beat then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. And during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in this print, the victim herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the east side of Bri Briar Road. Extraordinary. But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? The bouquet, I presume. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the rose bouquet. Lord Van Zeek said it wasn't noticed until the morning, as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. Yes, it couldn't be seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond, Constable Roly Beat, if that is your real name? Oh, uh, well, I'm uh, very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? Oh, Roly. It isn't true, is it? What that lawyer said is all lies, isn't it? I know it is, because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know. And I've had no excuse to to abuse you and throw knives and guns at you, but I will in a moment. Oh, she will. I had a dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Everything come out. Everything exposed. Only it seems it wasn't a dream at all. Good golly! Order, order, order. What on earth is the meaning of all this? Oh, Roly, why? Why would you do something like this? Moving a corpse is, is, is a criminal offense, isn't it? should be one too. <laughs> Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. Oh, I can't say, sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all this for damaging the Yard's reputation and what? For, for everything? I have a possible explanation for why, on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know how to count to one? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. 
Yet, Lord Van Zeex, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. I believe it would be beneficial for the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. England. Japan. It makes no difference where you come from, if you're a good person. But everyone in England isn't, because they're racist. <laughs> And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. <laughs> oh, I would love some QTEs. It would be great. That is the motive. Take that! I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land now that everyone has mentioned it 430,710 times, and I have only just arrived from Japan, which is why all this information about London's so-called Bobbies, if that is their name, and it's not for most of them, except for Bobby, is completely new to me. I've learned that although, though honorable, Patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after the citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways, there's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh, yes. It was our very first wedding anniversary. Constable Beat had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife, and was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. When he and Mrs. Beat stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. When he saw that shadowy figure through the... F Wait, is this me or him talking? He saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them. What must have gone through the man's mind? Not this shit again. <laughs> but, sir, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. Beat puts up with a lot being married to a bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. This is the warrant card that Constable Beat offered to lend me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says, When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Aha! Constable Beat. Is that or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Oh. Exactamundo. To summarize, I drew this manga. The incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious! Constable, do you realize the gravy of what you have done? It, it was the first time since I became a copper that I ever cursed God. Wow, this guy's serious. <laughs> Stay close to me, Pat. A criminal could still be lurking somewhere. As we ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and that meant for me. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the, assist with the initial investigations and help detectives. Why here? Why did this have to happen here? And why a night of all nights? Why? I decided to become an atheist, I did. 
It's a copper's job to guard the scene of a crime, so I told Pat she'd have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then when I opened my mouth to speak, it just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my mouth. It sounded like they were being voiced by a professional va- voice actor who was very good at whatever accent. <laughs> oh, this is the next beat to mine, Pat. So you have to go to the police box that covers it. Turn right along Mearsham Street, and then... Dots, dots, and more dots. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, Constable. I, I just want me just that one night to take my Patricia out for dinner. Oh, Rolly. Just that one night. You knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street to the pa- east pavement of Briar Road. Which falls under the neighboring Beats care. You see, I, I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon? <laughs> oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my Rolly would never have left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. I see your meaning now. But God got me back for my sins, didn't he? That's why. That's why I missed the rose I brought for Pat. Oh no, Rolly, that was all my fault. I should never have dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Rolly. And can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from one side of the road to the other, in total? Hmm? Oh, um, four it was, yes sir, definitely. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsume, and the fourth... ...being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garadib household, of course. So wait, after all that... So Saki actually, actually was there? He was the guy that they saw run away? The whole thing with, oh, could have been, could have been a green shirt, McGreen coat over on the other street. It was like, no, he totally just, he was walking along and he, he pole vaulted across the, the construction work. Oh, okay. Being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garrett household, of course. But... What made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, sir, that's because that's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. Hmm. You're sure it was this book, The Lion's Pride, that the victim was holding? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm. Interesting. So, I mean, that really just means she bent down to pick it up, and that's when she got stabbed. Thought it was an open and shut case at the time, you see. There were only two people at the scene, and me and Pat both saw it happen. However, which way you looked at it, had to be the fellow who ran off who'd done it, I thought. Oh, something's on fire. I couldn't see the arm, really. I didn't think moving it all over the road would make a jot of difference. Suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. My lord. Yes, Lord Van Zeeks. 
I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses. <laughs> Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Prosecutor, sir. What will become of my Roly? What will happen to him? He's dead. He's dead. He's gonna burn to death in a in a in, in a pagoda, in a in a omnibus. That's it. For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in dear in due course. <laughs> Yes, they're respecting my stream charming by wrapping up the case probably in the next ten minutes. Please don't punish my husband. This this was all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late. I'm always moaning and throwing things and weapons. Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. All right then, my love. One. One last thing, constable. Ah, ah, ah. Sir? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every ma detail matters, no ma however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Carve that lesson into your mind. And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Oh, uh, never again, sir. You, you mean to say? Leave now. This trial is not yet over. But my stream. Uh, um, sir. Well, quite a startling revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party transpo transplanting the entire scene of a crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here. Principally, that the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume, Natsume is the only person who could have committed this Objection. crime. Freaking gravity, idiot. No, I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there is someone else, another person who could be responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Forgive me for being presumptuous, but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of this possibility already. <laughs> Lord Van Zeex, is this true? Very well. Name the person, if you will, and if further investigation is warranted. The prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. Name this other person, Isaac Newton. No, sorry. Take that! The defense would once again like to request the cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again? My assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case, it's imperative that we cross-examine juror number four, Mrs. Joan Garadeb. M me Oh, dear me. Objection! Mm. That request has already been denied. But the situation is very different now. Mrs. Garadeb, answer me this. What do you want now, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Garadeb, which we've glossed over many times, an uncomfortable amount of times. In the course of the argument, a might Don't use the passive voice! <laughs> A minor house fire was, was ignited. <laughs> and to clear the smoke from the window, your husband opened a window that looks out over Briar Road. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the open, top-hinged casement window, the book plummeted directly down, finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I said, what of it? 
During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Jaredeb. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back. Have you really never laid eyes on it before? Just plead the fifth. Easy. Easy clap. Plead the fifth. You won't. I don't recall it. Seriously? Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my ass? <laughs> this is terrible. And anyway, the man over there in all that regalia said members of the jury needn't testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. Objection. No. I have no recollection of saying that at all. Juror number four. Oh. Make no mistake. You jurors are not special in any way. Your parents did not love you. Now oh, he's he's drifting into Russia. Get back in Transylvania, you. You are not immune to the judicial process. If you know something about this knife, madame, let the truth come out. <laughs> but but that's just a a co common or garden? What? A common or garden? Knife. Okay. It could have come from anywhere. <laughs> we have several like that at home. I if one went missing, how would you expect me to know? What's that? Are you joking? What are you saying, please, Mr. Mrs. Garadip? Now you listen to me. I, I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that I'd injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it unless it was the person I'm married to. Them, them, I could believe it. And in fact, it is a fact. In fact, he has, he has burn marks all over his legs to prove it. Oh, the poor woman. <laughs> all right. So yes, I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence if you're going to insist on this being my fault. You're going to have to prove to me that I threw that knife if that's what you think. Come along now, chop chop. Do your worst. Uh, well... Well, Mr. Naruto, if I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown it. I would have thrown it at her already. Give her a taste of her own medicine. Then take the stand, juror. Oh. The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Van Zeeks. I'm I'm going to have to testify. Juror number four. As I'm sure you will appreciate, having observed it with your own eyes today, witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed. Truths of which the witnesses themselves may not even have been aware. Oh, dearie me. So I demand your full and unad unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Garadab. And mark my words, in this court of law on Thursday, we shall extract the truth. Because that is the end of the stream. To be resumed on Thursday. So thank you everybody for being here. I do hope you're enjoying as much as I am. <laughs> this, is, this has been good. All of the cases so far I've really liked. Um, the, the ship with the, with the auto-locking doors whenever uh, the ocean happens was a little silly. But <laughs> aside from that, I, all of this has been great. Um... <laughs> your husband <laughs> um so tomorrow we will do some more monsters expedition i don't know how much more of that game there is but that's also very enjoyable and then we'll come back come back to this on thursday most likely so thank you everybody and i hope to see you next time